Right, hello everyone. Welcome to the stream. Today we continue where we left off a couple of days ago. Um, let's see where I left off. First we're gonna compile. Good that it's still compiling. I didn't change anything. Alright, um, yeah, I think I did wall jumping last time. Uh, yeah, I want to change how I'm handling wall jumping currently. Currently, if I wall jump and I hold the um, right arrow key down, um, I invert the control, so the right arrow key becomes uh, the left arrow key. So we're basically as long as we are holding down the right arrow key, we're moving to the left after wall jump like this. Unless I um, release the arrow key and then press it again, and then I can move to the right again. And that doesn't feel good. Also, my movement speed is kind of slow and my jump height is too high. Another thing is uh, the player model. Um, some of the voxels have black to the side, which doesn't look good. I'm gonna fix that. And also, probably change uh, the player graphics. Since um, he's way too small, he's just as high, uh, tall as a single tile, which is uh, not enough, I think. Funny thing is to uh, if you try to do multiple wall jumps in one go, you have to press a lot of buttons, but it uh, does work. All right. Uh, looking at the code, mm, I have a lot of tabs open as always. Let's close a bunch. Don't need that. Mm. Game, I might need that. Oh, I already have that open. Alright, uh, it's looking good. Um, if I want to change the player voxels, how they're rendered, I need to be able to define the. Um, how the voxels get there. Um, how a voxel is composed in terms of uh, texture mapping. Currently I always use the default voxel which is uh, let's see default cell where is it defined? Right here so um, each face uses a different texture index there, there are six textures in total, so each face, as you can see, has a different index. And I might, uh, I want to be able to uh, change these at runtime. So I might want to place voxels that uh, index six times the texture with the number zero, for instance, which I can't do currently. To be able to do that, I need to change our GUI code a little bit. Uh, one thing I need is uh, to be able to place multiple controls in a single line, which I currently can't. Um, How am I doing placement? Hmm. 
add item. Add, I'm using the field add position. I didn't see that. Oh, there it is. All right. Um, also, we're gonna have a field. Um, a field that tells us how many to place in a row. Mm. Or um, so um, the normal behavior is to place controls starting from the top left and for each control that I add it's gonna be added uh, below the uh, last one except if horizontal count isn't zero in which case we decrement this and then place it to the uh, place a new control to the right of the previous one and since this does the placement currently the add item function we just need to change this one uh, actually let's see check something real quick uh, all right this is fine so we go group if it had horizontal count place item or Horizontally, else place item vertically, which is this code currently, and um, yeah, Okay, and if we are placing it horizontally, we will decrement this. And we're gonna do something similar to this, but uh, here we need to change the add position, the x value. Where do I set this? Group um, at right here. It's just a title bar left. All right. So when I'm um, placing the item vertically, I can't use this value, or uh, I actually need to reset it, since here we are growing to the right, and when we then switch over to placing them vertically again, I need to, to move to the left again. So... Um, I think like this should be enough. Mm, maybe like this. But um, we are not changing the bottom.
Um, yeah, I have to see about this, whether I need that. This part is looking correct, I think. Alright, uh, this should compile. Mm -hmm. And then we need a new function that does... Um, So we can set the horizontal count basically. Um, we're gonna call it uh, same line. Then we're gonna tell it how many controls to place on the same line, and then when we then place the controls, they're gonna be on the same line. That's the basic idea. Alright, let's test that out. Um, let's say the save and load buttons are gonna be next to each other. So same line two. And uh, um, it's kind of working, except where is the save button? Uh, this is the load button, the tile mapping. Uh, yeah. Didn't quite work. Oh, that's because um, if we, when we go over to, if this becomes zero again, we then need to move over to the next line. Yeah, we weren't growing uh, down. That was the problem. Alright, the save and low buttons are now next to each other. Alright, let's do the mapping stuff also next to each other. Okay, that's unexpected. Uh, I'm missing this line. Okay, um, yeah, now I'm missing. So let's move this over here so I can get rid of this which means I can move this out of the if condition since it's the same for both uh, this becomes we're not placing anymore. We are uh, grow growing. Um, change layout. Alright. Okay, now it's working again. So, um, next thing is I need some way to change the, as I said, I need a way to change the mappings. Um, 
can I tell the button with height? I can, but that's not the version I need. The button. Uh, I need an all out of this. That takes uh, the width and the height. Alright, then I need a new group which we're gonna call texture index. Currently, there is no field called texture index. Um, let's see, voxel GUI state exactly. That's what I wanted. Two K lines long file. <laughs> That's nothing. Um, Yeah, I haven't done any refactoring yet, so that's why. I'm still in the process of changing the um, interfaces around and restructuring code, so moving them out of uh, to different files uh, is a little bit too much friction currently. But once the interfaces are uh, more or less finished, or I'm not gonna change them anymore since I'm um, I like the API, then I'm probably gonna refactor them and move them around. Let's see, what did I add? I added this now. We're gonna do texture voxel texture index. Why am I adding tabs all of a sudden? Why is it adding two tabs with one key press? I think sublime text is uh, broken. Let's restart. Okay, now it's working again. Weird bug. Um, okay. Let's try this out. Same line. So we're gonna place six buttons on the same line. <laughs> I have strange feet fetish. I like to see people's main functions. Show me yours. All right. My main function is a bit long. Starts here, that's a Windows main function. You're allocating 10 megabytes of memory, and uh, that's all of the memory this program uses. Then I'm loading the Windows, uh, the game DLL, since the game code lives in its own DLL. I'm passing in the platform functions to the game. Here we are initializing the game. I initialize OpenGL and the window. This is timing code. I guess I'm allocating a little bit more. Oh yeah, I, I allocate um, 
2 times 10 megabytes since this is the recording memory when I do input recording and that's the main game loop this is the hot loading stuff so if I recompile the DLL it's gonna um, unload the currently loaded DLL and then bind it to the recompiled one uh, timing code, OpenGL code, input code um, this is the input recording and replaying and this function here is the game loop You're, this, is, this function resides in the DLL so we are calling into and render. We are calling into this function and then the rendering, some more frame timing code, and then that's the main loop basically. Okay. Um, this button goes over the width of the group, that's not nice. Also, the buttons are way too big, let's make them... Can I think they... I can get away with 16 by 16. They were, <laughs> were teaching me don't write functions longer than 40 lines of code. Um, sure, uh, you could do that, but then again, uh, why write a function if uh, you're only gonna call them once? Most of this code here is only called once, so I'm only initializing a window once, why should I move that out into a different function? I could do it, it's just uh, more typing and I don't gain anything. I find uh, refactoring should um, follow... you should have a reason for refactoring. So if uh, you're not gonna call the function again somewhere else, why put it into a different... Uh, why move it out into a function? So let's check 16 by 16. Yeah, this is looking nice. We're gonna repeat this six more times. Oh, actually, this I can move into a separate function. And then you're gonna do the do buttons. This I can now call six times. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, how interesting. The frame rate is really bad if I do this. So currently the average frames per seconds are 300 and if I switch into the uh, GUI code it's uh, dropping to 20. Lambdas are ugly, yeah they're kind of, they kind of are. Um, I, actually, I don't mind lambdas being like this. I just uh, wish there was a shorter way to do them, like in C sharp, where you do this and then blah blah blah. Um, 
Um, why is it so s slow? Is it because of the lambda? I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, it's because of the frequent context um, switches. I'm not using a texture atlas. So for each of these buttons, I'm uh, flushing the vertex buffer since I need to change the texture. And we are doing this uh, 36 times per frame. Uh, more than that, since all of these also do context switches. Uh, that's why it's so slow. There is no reason that this should be that slow if uh, I can do way more work when I switch to the game. And this... Uh, doesn't drop any frames. We are uh, still hitting 300 frames per second. Well, 250. So, okay, that means. Should I optimize this by switching to a texture atlas? I don't think I should do that yet. Do you have GitHub? Yes, I have. Uh, you can look at the description below the um, below the stream. There is a link, and also I can I guess I can link in the chat. There you go, that's my GitHub. I have a couple of uh, public domain uh, libraries if you're interested in something like that. My newest one is a JSON library, since uh, everyone has, its, has his own JSON parsing library. Okay. This is kind of laggy, but I think it's fine for now. I will just... Um, let's do actual functionality instead of optimizing for now. Um, the reason I did this in the first place was to be able to switch the texture mapping of voxels. So let's do that. The texture mapping... <coughs> It's currently, um, I'm always using the default cell, which uh, I want to change. Um, let's see, voxel GUI state. Oh, no, that should be in the voxel state. Um, this is the cell I'm using to place voxels. Okay, so this function is gonna take. Um, wait, it doesn't need to take anything. It's gonna take uh, the. It's gonna capture the voxel state. So it has access to uh, this field here. 
but it's gonna take an argument um, telling me the index um, basically which of these which of the faces I am currently modifying so how did I do this so each face is occupying four bits so I should retrieve the mm -hmm. I should retrieve the face by doing this and then four bits are two to the power of four which is 0xf right 4 bits yes so this is um, this way I get the face wait I don't need to retrieve the face Um, let's see. So now I need to check whether we are hitting the buttons and in case we do we need to change the face to a different value. Like this and then if face is not minus one or I guess uh, this checks better. Then we go ahead and um, placing cell. Okay, first I need the I need to mask off the face. <laughs> uh, mask. Which is zero XF. So we are masking this off. So the four bits for the current phase um, are gonna be set with uh, zeros. And then we go ahead and Okay, this should be working. Let's try this out. Missing semicolon. Oh, what am I doing? It's supposed to be this. Okay, uh, mask of current face value 
paste texture index value and then um, Okay, let's try and load the hero. That's the hero. It's using the wrong texture. There he is. And now I want to change these voxels to be to use a different mapping. Uh, which one is that? The right face? Maybe I should have written which face I'm currently modifying. So let's do that. String view face. So this becomes 7 then. And the faces are front, left, back, right, top, bottom. Mm, yeah, I have two things. Uh, face label. Okay, this, uh, this didn't end up as I thought it would. Okay, so what is I'm GUI text doing that it shouldn't be doing? Oh, it's using the whole group to set the width, which it shouldn't doing so let's change this So I'm going to parameterize this function. The default behavior is to, uh, we're just going to set the width and height to these values. So I need the font. So this is the, is I'm doing global variable? Yes, it is. Currently, it is. Um, then I need a version of this that, um, oh no, I wrote that version that takes the width and height explicitly. Yes. And then we want to call into this version. Right here. So that everything is aligned correctly. Let's say that the string is 50 units wide, 50 pixels, and then 16 high. Uh, we are not using this. Okay. 
Mm, this is a little bit too much. 50 was too much. Uh, let's use 35. Alright, this is better. Uh, let's load the hero again. There he is. So I need to change the right face of these voxels to be taking the same texture as the front face. So the front face is taking zero currently. I guess uh, if you don't, we can't see which one is currently selected. So I should change that. But I need to change the right one to zero. Uh, let's test it out. Oops. What went wrong here? Um, this should be fine. Reading from location. This is fine. Oh, this texture entry is wrong. Where did this come from? From here. Oh, that's incorrect. So if I did an assertion before doing this here, I would have caught this. Uh, 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 count of So can I All right, I can place a default cell without problems. And once I press on this button here and then try to place voxels, it crashes. And now we are hitting the assertion, so that was indeed the problem. So when getting the texture index for the right face, which is, which has the index three, we get a bogus texture index. Okay, so we will do this. Um, voxel cells. What did I call them? Uh, 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 here, voxel face.
Uh, wait, that's not correct. No, let's do it differently. We will first load the thing again. Now I'm gonna set the breakpoint. Um, Alright, this is the front face, we don't care about the front face. It's still the front. It's a back face now. No, it's the right face, okay. Let's step in here and see what happens. This is fine. Well, you three. That's fine. We multiply it by four, which is correct. Oh, I forgot the minus one. And also, I have a function that does the setting for me. Why did I do that myself? Good to know. So instead of doing this thing here, so we give it the cell. the face and the new index so the face and the new index and that's it So we need to change these now, voxel face, front, left, back, right, top and bottom. Uh, this should be voxel face, not voxel focus. Okay. Alright, the right face should be index zero. And still the buck. Okay, what is going wrong here? Oh, I'm not adding one here, so that's a problem. This should be plus one. Am I using this function anywhere else? No, uh, that's why I never check that. Alright, texture. Oops, uh, hero. Um, all right, that's unexpected. All right, oh, okay. I guess my texture mapping isn't quite right.
Hmm. Okay, that is because when I'm using. Okay, I can show it uh, by example. So this is the. Uh, no, okay, this is way too small. Paint. So the right face of the voxels is using this region of the texture usually. So this is only three pixels wide. And then when I change it to use the front face, which is this region of the texture, it thinks this whole thing is only three pixels wide. And that's why the mapping had uh, black regions. So I need to change it to not think that's three pixels wide. Generate. So where do I? This is where I assign the voxel. Uh, here, this is where I set the texture coordinates, the initial ones. Oh, and this is why it thinks it's only 3 pixels wide, right? because the grid dimensions in that dimension is only 3 voxels wide. Right? So my hero Uh, my uh, where did it go? The hero voxel grid itself is only three voxels wide, and it thinks the texture is one to one to that. So instead of doing this, um, what's the best way to fix that? I guess hmm. Is there a good way to fix that? Let's see the texture mapping is this one. So I could store the texture width and heights here. And if I do that, I won't have that problem anymore. But then again, this is still, I don't think this is a solution. This is still gonna look weird. Yeah, it's gonna look weird. So um, the better solution is, I think, to change this um, the textures itself. Um, let's see. So these two pixels are supposed to be in this color and these two also. Um, 
okay this is correct I think so let's try this out instead instead of doing this and then when I do the hero mapping which one is the right face again uh, voxel face 0, 1, 2, 3 this one is the right face Okay, the texture width changed. It's now 16 pixels. And the right face starts at um, 13 pixels. Also, let's make this line black too, so there is no bleeding. So 13, this becomes 13. The top value is 0, the bottom value is 12, that's correct, and 3 width, that's also correct. That's it. I think that's it. Uh, about the voxels, about the texture. Alright, there it is. The two voxels here are now a single color as well as these two voxels. Yeah. Okay, so now that should be the same in the game. Yep, looks nice. Okay, good. So um, I'm not very satisfied with how my texture mapping turned out. The way I made this um, in my head it was a lot nicer, but now <laughs> finally when I used it. Um, I had to change the texture itself instead of uh, changing the mapping for the individual faces because the way I did it that's only gonna work for voxels that are um, cube sized so each dimension has the same amount of voxels and the hero is um, wider than uh, well, it's wider than um, he is deep. He's only three voxels deep. And that's why my mapping failed there. But then again, I only need the mapping... Um, I only need that feature for the tiles itself. And the tiles are always 16 by 16 by 16. So I guess the texture mapping is uh, fine for that. Yeah, I think I don't need to change the mapping. Since the hero is um, the odd one out. Okay, the next thing I want to change is how wall jumping works. Currently, um, if I wall jump, I reverse the arrow keys. So holding down the left button makes him go to the right as long as I'm holding it down. Once I release it, it, uh, it reverses to the, its original direction. And I thought that would be the best way so that the hero doesn't, after wall jump, he doesn't immediately stick to the wall again. But it uh, doesn't feel very good 
to have to release the uh, arrow key so it regains his original direction. So instead, here that's the flip flipping of the arrow keys. This is for the left key flip, and this is the right key flip. If I do the wall jump to the left of the wall, so first we will go ahead and undo the flipping so the flipping is gone not using that anymore um, game state yeah let's get rid of the flipped values this should generate a bunch of compiler bugs But the uh, wall jumps as um, themselves shouldn't be. Um, I should still be able to do wall jumps. Actually, we are doing multiple wall jumps with one attempt. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bug that I just introduced. And we have that problem that I said we would have where the hero sticks to the wall even though we are doing a wall jump. So with a normal jump I can't go over the wall here, but if I do a wall jump I can. So okay, um, the multiple wall jump attempts. That's because we are sticking to the wall, so I need the player to not stick to the wall for a couple of frames. Let me look at the player state. We have a wall jump timer, that's the window time window in which we can per perform a wall jump. I don't think I'm using the wall jump duration anymore. No. This will be how long the player can't move towards the wall so we don't stick to it. We will use this field, which I didn't use before. Why is this? I think we don't... Do we? Where do I set this? Oh, this just records... Um, whether we do a wall jump to the left or to the right. So currently, if I stick to the wall, we are setting the jump timer to 10, so I have 10 frames time to execute the wall jump. And then, um, this is where we actually do the uh, wall jump. If all the requisites are set, so we are at the frame boundary, um what is this? Oh yeah, we are we press the jump button. We are not grounded currently, we are rising and we triggered the wall jump precondition, which means we are sticking to the wall. If all of these are true, then we're gonna do a wall jump.
so we reset the player velocity in the y direction to the wall jump speed that's why the player can jump higher if he does a wall jump then we change the player velocity and then we're gonna set the wall jump duration let's say the player can't move towards the wall for um, 20 frames just to test it then we need to decrease this duration at the start of the frame What happens to this value? Do I change this? Okay. Then instead of reacting to the key presses, we are going to introduce a condition here. So if this is not zero and we are wall jumping to the left, we won't be able to move to the left. Wait, this is the wrong one. So if we are wall jumping to the right, so the wall is to the left of us, then we don't want to move towards the wall. So, only if we are wall jumping to the left. <laughs> okay, uh, this check is the wrong way around. Float epsilon. What did I call it? Yeah, it's float epsilon, and I can use the big epsilon. Don't need that much precision. Or no. Or, yeah, I think this is correct. The same for moving to the right, except um, this is inverted. All right. Now, when I do a wall jump, we are still sticking to the wall. So the wall jump duration, it does actually count down if you look at this value here. Yeah, it does count down, but it doesn't uh, inhibit my movement. Okay, I had these other way around it needs to be like this mm. I'm still sticking to the ball
Why am I sticking to the wall if I said this? Oh, I think I need to reset that for every frame. Let's do this. So if we are currently executing a wall jump, we want the player velocity to be always set in the x direction. And this should make it so that you are not sticking to the wall. Alright, there it is. Now when I do wall jump, It looks like this. So the 20 frames is a little, a little bit too much. Let's change that to, let's say, 8 frames. And let's make it so that um, only for the first four frames are we gonna set the direction. So the remaining four frames we are just rising. Um, how does that look? So this way I can do two wall jumps with one jump. As you can see, if you look here how many wall jump attempts there are. That was just one. This was two wall jumps. Interesting. There is a slight bug there. Um, let me try to record that. Mm, didn't get it. Oh, there it was. So if I replay this, let's go frame by frame. I can execute the wall jump after I leave the wall. So right here I am already moving to the left and then I am doing a wall jump. There. <laughs> so I should um, clear the wall jump flag if we didn't encounter a collision. So if we didn't collide. Wall jump timer is gonna set, be set to zero. Let's see if I can do the same bug again. Okay, now I can't do wall jumps at all. So I'm currently trying to do wall jumps. So this line 
it's problematic. If I remove it, yeah, I can do. I'm executing wall jumps again. And then if I comment it in again, the wall jumps are gone. So this line is a problem. So if I didn't collide this frame, I want the wall jump timer to be zero. Only as long as I'm pressing against the wall. Why isn't this working? Setting the wall jump timer works just fine. So if you didn't collide, it means I'm not pressing against a wall currently. So of course the wall jump timer should be zero in that case. Why isn't this working? The wall jump timer is always zero. Oh, that's because when I'm pressing against a wall, I'm setting the wall jump timer to 10. And then I um, reflect the velocity. Where is it? Right here. So the velocity is now pointing directly up. And then I continue checking collisions. And the next time I'm not colliding against anything since I'm moving straight up. And then I set the wall jump timer to zero. So this should be. If you didn't collide and the player velocity is not zero in the x direction. If it's if it is zero, it means um we are currently not um moving towards the wall. And as you can see that fixed the problem. But uh the equal to zero is um Uh, because of floating point inaccuracies, it's not very reliable, so we will be using this function instead. Uh, this should be not. Right, so we can do wall jumps again. Uh, let me turn off the recording. Turn off recording. Oh, what happened? Right there, the hero is down there now. Come on. Let's try to trigger the bug from before. That was a double wall jump. Alright. There, I tried to execute the wall jump right here, and it didn't work this time since the wall jump timer is zero. And the wall jump timer is zero as soon as I am not, um, I'm as soon as I'm not in contact with the wall. So, let's see. Th right here I'm in contact with the wall, so the wall jump timer is 10. But then once I lose contact, it uh, gets reset to 0. The wall jump timer is because... Okay, but if I do it this way, 
this isn't gonna work. The wall jump timer is because um, I wanted to be able to do wall jumps without holding down uh, the left arrow key if I'm in this position. Oh no, it does still work. The wall jump timer. Wait, let let me check this. Record. No. Uh, record. Replay. No, the wall jump timer is still counting down. Why isn't it being set to zero? So around here I'm stopping and holding down the left arrow key right here. Now it's counting down, but the uh, huh? why isn't this triggering? Let's see. The x velocity is zero and we didn't collide. Why isn't this triggering? Oh no, the x velocity is zero. Right. That's why it's not triggering. Okay, that actually is the correct fix then. Since I wanted to have a 10 frame window once I stopped pressing the left arrow key to execute the wall jump. So um, I stopped pressing the left arrow key and then let's say 5 frames later I press the up arrow key, a uh, wall jump is gonna get executed. That was the idea between. Yeah, it does, it's actually working. Let's reduce the wall jump height and the jump height itself. It's a bit too much currently. So the jumping speed is minus three. That's too much. How is minus one? Well, that's a small jump. <laughs> All right, that's. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, a bit too little. Oh, that's nice. Looking from behind, now my controls are inverted. Okay. Yeah. This is pretty nice, I think. And I can't do wall jumps while sliding down, only when I'm rising.
Okay. So this is working nicely. Um, this kind of code I'm using pretty often, so I'm gonna write a timer class or function. So these are gonna be timers now. Um, I think this is actually nicer. These are now countdown timers. This too. And then here we do The wall jump duration like this. Hmm. No, I can't just compare these two floats. I guess I could. Um, do I need this to be a distinct type? Maybe I just continue using floats. So that would look uh, float that would look like this. I guess. Well, this is nicer when using the timers, but when looking at the um, fields themselves, it's not clear that I'm supposed to call this function on these values. So the other way to do this would be to make this comparable to float. Or here I'm I'm basically I guess the basic queries I need to do on a timer is whether it expired. So it's zero, which is this here. So I could uh, write a function for that. Is timer expired?
um, float. I guess this way is better. What is this again? Um, meant to write this. Yeah, this one. So we are checking whether this is less than zero using an epsilon value. Which is which one is clearer? Is it just writing this or the one below. I think I like this one more. Okay, we should have errors now. We are going to replace these with the new function that we just wrote. So this becomes um, the timer is not expired. Yeah. And this also becomes timer not expired. Or, I think I like this the best. Going here and saying we have an explicit operator bool, which so we make this uh, queryable. So then instead of calling this function, I can just say and that these timers are still running so they are not zero as if they are just simple integers so we calculate velocities and the up key press timer is valid and we are not grounded etc i think i like this one the best I guess I still need to make these comparable to floats. Um, let's do that then. <coughs> I guess I'm doing that um, This is not something I'm gonna do very often, so I guess I could just access the um, the field directly.
Okay, now it's compiling again. Let's check that we didn't bro. Oh, I did break something. Where did the hero go? Am I doing infinite wall jumps? There he is. Very, very high up, and he's. Oh. <laughs> His height is at minus 2700 currently, so we are doing infinite wall jumps. What did I break? Wall jump attempted, what? Oh, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, I have this backwards. This is supposed to return true if the timer is still valid. Instead, it returned true if the timer expired. And that's why we could do wall jumps even though we weren't uh, in contact with the wall. Okay, there it is. Can I get up there? Yeah. Barely. Okay, I think it's time to implement a camera, so I don't need to move the camera around manually when in the game code. So I would like to have a camera that's uh, somewhere around here. Um, like this. Or maybe a camera that's a little bit closer up, like this. And it's gonna follow the hero. So the game state is going to have a camera. Camera is defined as a position, look direction, the right vector and the up vector. So we need to initialize them. Um, right here so the make camera function takes a position and the look vector and the up vector okay uh, the position should be 
let's say minus in the z direction uh, minus 10 we are looking um, in the positive z direction and the up vector is the y axis Then let's have a toggle in the game state. Use game camera. So if this is true, we are gonna use the game camera. Otherwise, we are gonna use the camera of uh, that I am controlling manually. Uh, I don't need to process the game camera. Where do I set the camera? There. So if game use game camera is true we use the game camera instead and then I need a way to toggle that let's introduce a new key binding up here somewhere if key is pressed Um, let's use the zero key. Do I have a zero key? Um, key codes. Key zero, yeah, I have. Okay, if I press 0, uh, that's not nice. Why? Why am I not seeing anything? I'm also missing some key presses sometimes. That's weird. Why am I missing key presses? It doesn't happen with that arrow key. That's Hmm. 
Okay, it might be because of the positioning of the camera. Let's uh, say minus 100. Maybe I'm way too close. Um, still not seeing anything. Okay, so position, the look vector, the up vector. This should these should be arcs. The right vector is the cross. Between the up and look, uh, set. let's uh, see. This should be one zero zero. Yeah, it's correct. So what's the issue? It's looking correct to me. The game camera doesn't need processing. How do I set up the game camera? Let's see. To box so camera. Uh, where do I initialize this? Update and render. Make camera here. So I'm looking at Let's compare this. It's pretty much the same. The only difference is the position. Huh? Does this need to be positive 100? Whoops. Not seeing anything. So let's dump the camera values. Um, update and render right here. This is the position. Uh, 
um, the look. Yes, I should have done this. What's the problem before identify uh, camera? I just identified it. Huh? Oh, uh, missing. Left shift operators still missing one there and here. All right. Yeah, I guess. If I'm at minus 100 and around zero, oh, I'm way too close still. So I need the camera to be at Four thousand mm, where is it? Make camera right here. So this needs to be four thousand. Minus four thousand and minus seven hundred. Okay. Mm, now I can see a tile. Why is this so wrong? Oh, that's minus six thousand. All right, there it is. And I can switch between both cameras. Oh, 
my hero. He died. Let's um, see the camera is more or less okay. I guess he is uh, the camera is too far away. I would like to be a bit closer. And also, I wanted to follow the hero or the player. Mm. Okay, so let's change this to 5000. Um, let's see. This is better, I think. Now we need to center the hero. I guess one thing I could do is game camera position is the player position. Does the player has, have a position? Yes, it's a vec two though. So we do a vec three. Do I have this function? Vector. I don't. Alright. I could write it. Uh, I, th I guess it's fine then. So now the camera is kinda following the hero, even though the Y position is inverted. And the effects are very slight. Okay, now the camera follows the hero better, but the hero isn't at the center. I guess these values are wrong then. Ah, there it is. Okay, now instead of making the camera follow the hero like this, 
we are gonna make it uh, let's see so if the hero is here will not move the camera as long as the hero is in this rectangle and only if the hero attempts to leave this area is the camera gonna follow the hero so the camera isn't gonna move as much as before so this value here is the camera origin so I should refactor this, but uh, first we're gonna make this work and then see how I can generalize it. Okay, so the game state. Uh, this is a wrong file, game state. Hmm. I need a rectangle that describes the follow region. So let's initialize this. So let's say the screen is 500 by 500 currently. Do I have this screen width somewhere? App state. Right here. So we will say Let's say it's half of the width of the window 